Let's take a quick look at some of the new audio engine and mixing enhancements found within Cubase Pro 10. Cubase Pro 10 has been optimized to take advantage of Macs and PCs that have more than 14 logical CPU cores and also contains a solution for the amount of MMCSS threads in Windows 10. Cubase 9.54, which was recently released, introduced a new subtle feature which allows you to actually record the audio at 32-bit integer. So as audio interfaces come out as 32-bit integer savvy, we can take advantage of that immediately inside of Cubase. The channel strip has also been optimized to make it a little easier and more pleasant to look at. It almost looks like a 500 series rack in software. We can see our noise gate. We have three different forms of compression our channel EQ, we have de-essing, as well as the envelope shaper, like, an, uh, like a transient designer. We could have three forms of saturation, including Magneto 2, and three forms of limiting. To change the signal flow order, just drag like that. The compression also has an edit module. So if I wanted to look at the interface of my tube compressor, I could click there. If I wanted to see my standard compressor, we could set that up as well as our vintage compressor. The Reverence Convolution Reverb has also been updated with additional content in the Vintage Verb collection. So it gives you a number of high quality plate reverbs as well as classic tape delays and some classic reverbs that will just augment the already awesome capabilities of Reverence. Now, many people will start working on a mix and they want to assemble different snapshots and be able to take different components from different snapshots. So if we're playing back a particular project and I start making adjustments, and I like how this is setting up for a rough mix, I could click here on the camera and take a snapshot. When we go to our full console view, we can now see our different snapshots. Each snapshot can be labeled. So if I wanted to call this great mix, each snapshot can also have its own notes. So you can keep track of what changes are in each particular snapshot. And we can have up to 10 snapshots per project. So if I wanted to recall a particular snapshot, we could actually look at our mixed console settings and we could choose to recall different components entirely. So we could, now at this point, if I wanted to start off with some of my previous snapshots, I could click here and my mixer will be recalled. And let's say this is a starting off point for the mix and maybe I thought the drums were too loud. So I could stop and we'll just come here click on that snapshot, my drums are down. And let's say in this snapshot, I wanted the drums and piano over here to be louder. So I'll recall that snapshot. And let's say I went crazy with effects on my particular project and I wanted to add a delay to the saxophone. So I can see my send effects here, we can see reverence. And now when I go to my saxophone, I could double click here and I'll see the sax delay with those particular settings. If I wanted to update particular snapshots, you could right click and update the particular snapshot with the current settings or delete the snapshots. But let's say I wanted to be a little more creative and I liked the delay on this particular snapshot, but that wasn't a component of my first snapshot that I did here. So I recall that snapshot, my delay is disappeared. So when I go to my mix console snapshot recall settings, I could now choose to say, I want only my send effects or only the pre, the inserts. So we could separate the different components of the mix console. And at this point say, I only want the selected channels. I'm going to select the saxophone part here. And now I want it to copy just the send effects or an individual component. So now when I go to my sax delay preset, I could recall only those particular settings 
within the current status of the snapshot. And again, the components that could be recalled within a snapshot are the pre, that includes the high pass, low pass filters, gain and phase, all of our inserts, EQs, channel strip, sends, pan, and volume. So as you can see, this could be an incredibly powerful tool to build up a mix, save it as a snapshot, completely take it down, build up something fresh, and be able to take different components of up to 10 independent snapshots and combine them as you see fit. Be aware that sometimes the snapshots can conflict with existing automation. So you may want to start by doing snapshots before doing extensive automation as the values might cause unexpected jumps. So you can see that the new functionality with the audio engine optimizations, the new mixing capabilities inside of Cubase Pro 10 make it a great solution so you could deliver your mixes fast and efficiently. If you have found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.